Hi guys, this is Sadek from droidone.com and in this video, we'll show you how to root the Project Elixir ROM using Magisk. So let me first show you, I'm using this Project Elixir ROM which is based on Android 13, the latest release and as you could see from the version itself and this is the system information. So I'm using the Android 13 version of the Project Elixir ROM and in this video, we'll show you how to root it using Magisk. So as of now, my phone is not rooted. Let me show you that as well. So for that, I'm using the root checker app. You could install from Play Store. So if I open the app and tap on verify root, you could see root is not properly installed on my phone. This means my phone is currently not rooted. So let's start get started with the steps to root this phone. First and foremost, please take a backup of all the data on your phone. Once you have done that, let's now proceed ahead. So let's start with downloading and installing the Android SDK platform tools folder. This is the official ADB binary given by Google and is required to execute ADB commands. So download it from the link given in the description and extract it anywhere on your PC. In my case, I've done the extraction in the E-Drive as you could see, you could extract it anywhere you want. Once that is done, you'll have to enable USB debugging on your device. This is required to execute ADB commands on your PC. So go to the settings menu and from settings menu, go to about phone and tap on build number seven time. You will now get a prompt that you are now a developer. So now go back, go to system, go to developer option and enable the toggle next to USB debugging. You will now get a prompt, tap on OK. You will now get one more prompt. This time it's for the RSA fingerprint, tap on allow. So let's now verify the ADB debugging connection. For that, go to the platform tools folder, address bar and type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch the command prompt with the platform tools folder directory. Now type in ADB devices command and make sure you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any serial ID, then disable and re-enable USB debugging or tap on re revoke USB debugging. Likewise, make sure to use the official USB cable and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC and not the 3.0 port. So try out these USB tweaks and make sure you are getting a serial ID. Once you are getting this ID, you are good to go ahead. So next up, you will now have to download the latest Magisk APK file. So go to my guide and click on this at the time of recording the video. The latest APK is version 25.2. So you just need to go to this guide and under this folder, you could access the latest magic APK file. Let me show you once. So just scroll down a little bit and from this content box, click on the latest magic version and you will be taken to this version. Now you could also verify the change log if you want from GitHub or simply click on this link to download the latest APK file. Once you have downloaded the magic APK file, you have to transfer it two places. The first is inside the platform tools folder. And the second one is inside your device. So make sure to keep the APK, APK file inside both these folders. Now, the file which is inside the platform tools folder have to be renamed to zip. We have to change the extension from APK to zip so that we could flash in the recovery. So just right click on the magic file and change the extension, remove APK from the end and rename it to zip. You will get a prompt, click on yes. With this, the magic is now in a flashable zip format. So we have to Convert the Magis APK which is in the platform tools folder to the zip format, whereas keep the APK which is on your phone in the APK format itself. So moving on, yes, one more thing for the ease of convenience, let's rename the app to something shorter. So let's rename it to some just Magis so that it becomes easier to type in command window. So let's rename to Magis. Once that is done, let's move over to our next step. The next step involves booting your phone to the recovery mode. So let's now boot our device to the recovery mode. For that, just type in the ADB reboot recovery command and hit enter. So let me show you once. So just type in ADB reboot recovery and hit enter. Your device will now boot to the product Elixir recovery and the process should take only about 10 seconds. So let's wait for the time frame. As you could see, our phone is now booting the recovery mode. So let's wait for that while it happens. So our phone is now booted to the product Elixir recovery as you could see. So from this screen, you have to select apply update, then select apply from ADB. Your device is now booted to the ADB sideload mode. So we will now sideload the Magisk APK. So from the command window, type in ADB sideload, followed by the name of the Magisk file, which in our case is Magisk. So type in Magisk and the extension, which is .zip. So make sure this is the right command and verify by the file name as well, and then hit enter. The Magisk will now begin sideloading on your phone. As you could see, the process has started and the process will take only around a minute at the very max. So let's wait for the time frame. The instruction should be same across all the devices on which you are flashing this ROM and routing it. So that's not a cause of concern. And yes, one more interesting thing to note is while when you have first flashed this ROM, 
you would have either used the pixel recovery or the linear recovery because at that point in time the ROM did not have its own recovery. But once you have flashed this ROM, you could now easily use the inbuilt recovery without any issues. So that's just a tip that I wanted to share with you all. And in the meantime, as you could see, Magis has been sideloaded on our phone. So as of now, it's flashing the new boot image file as you could see in the status. And it will only take a few more seconds to put and as you could see, we have now got the done message and on our command from window as, as well as showing total X first. So the total transfer has been completed. So you could now reboot a phone to the OS. So go back and then select reboot system now. Your phone will now boot to the OS, but as of now, the Magis has only been installed in the backend. There is no front end UI. So we will now be installing the Magis APK file on your phone as well. So let's wait while the phone is booting. Do note that for this time around, the phone might take a few additional seconds to boot up because the original boot partition has been patched by Magisk. So the first boot after patching the Magisk file could take a few additional seconds. That's not a cause of concern. So let's wait while this is happening. It should only take around 10 15 seconds more. And do note that in the command window, you might sometimes also get the number as 1.00 or 0.47. All that number does not matter. What only matters is you are getting a total transfer message. It's just the time it's showing in seconds how much it has taken. That's not the cause of concern. So moving on, let's now unlock our phone. And as you could see, we do not have the Magisk app because the Magisk has only been installed in the backend. So we will not be installing the Magisk app using the one that we have transferred earlier. So open any file app on your phone and then simply install the APK. So tap on the APK file and it will ask to enable unknown sources. So allow from this source and then tap on update. You will get the update message and not the install message because the Magisk app has been installed in the backend. We just need the UI. So it will only be get the update message. And the process will take a few seconds. As you could see, we now have the Magisk app. So launch it and let's wait for a few seconds. As you could see, it's asking for additional setup. So tap on OK. So Magisk will carry out a few backend tasks. And once it has done, it will restart our phone automatically. So you will have to wait for the time frame. And yes, once again, this time also the boot up could take around 10 to 15 seconds extra as compared to normal boot up because it has performed a few additional tasks in the backend. So let's wait for the time frame. And let's after that, we'll show you the result as well. So this boot up would also take a few additional seconds because Magisk has now patched the boot image and it has installed a few additional dependency in the backend. You will not notice such long boot up from the subsequent times. Just while the routing is going on, it takes additional boot up time. After that, the boot up will be normal. So it's currently in the boot animation and the process should take only a few more seconds to boot up. After that, we'll check out the result as well. So it's just about to boot up and let me then verify the result as well. So the phone has booted, let's now unlock it. And if I now launch the Magisk app, you could see I'm getting installed, yes, version 25.2. So this signifies that we have achieved root on our phone. Let me show you via the app as well, root checker app. So let me launch the app and if I tap on verify root, I'll get a Magisk prompt. So let me tap on grant. And as you could see, we have now rooted our phone, which has the Project Elixir ROM based on Android 13. So guys, this was all from this video on how you could root the Project Elixir ROM. If you have any queries, do let me know in the comment section. And guys, please subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks. Thanks a lot for watching.